Okay, what's up guys? This is Matthew Burns and welcome to your third tutorial on uh, making printed circuit boards using the photoresist method. So, last time we designed the transparency. Um, this is a little different from the uh, transparency that I showed you on the computer. I had to change it up a little bit because uh, one of the pads that I had to drill was smaller than the drill that I had. So there was a small problem, but I fixed that. I uh, redid the transparency. I did the same thing I told you to do. I just redesigned uh, sizes and stuff where you go into DRC and stuff like that. Um, also, uh, what we're going to need for this tutorial is a UV exposure box. This here is a UV exposure box that I built um, using a PIC16F870 microcontroller. It has a buzzer, an array of 160 ultraviolet LEDs, and uh, I'm going to be tutorialing how to make this in another, in another series. I don't have that done yet, but chances are they're done by the time you're watching this, so go ahead and check on my website, electroburns.com. Um, we're also going to need a developer solution, and this is uh, highly basic, so don't do what I'm doing. Don't put your fingers in there. Uh, you might want to use a pair of gloves. Just, you know, I think that might be a great idea. Also, I tried to make this video twice and I messed up both times because I didn't have a bucket of water by me. Um, you are going to want a bucket of water here. Reason so, because uh, while I'm running upstairs as fast as I can to get to a sink to uh, get all the excess developer solution off the board once it's done developing, the developer solution left on the board is going to keep developing the board and uh, eat away the traces. So, that's why you want the bucket of water. Um, you also might want a couple of paper towels, or if you have like a, uh, if you have a, uh, uh, a sponge brush or something like that from some sort of painting thing, you could uh, help develop a board that way. I'll show you what I mean when we get to that part. So the first thing we are going to do is expose the board to UV light. And uh, this is the board we are going to use here. This is, uh, I'm trying to keep it, Nate, come on, you don't got to hog like the space. Just, you can stand back a little bit. Um, this board here is a pre-sensitized uh, copper clad laminate. Uh, it has a layer of plastic here to keep the side with the uh, uh, photoresist layer from getting exposed to UV light from the lights in the room and stuff like that. Nate, back up. Uh, being exposed by lights in the room. Uh, but I don't really trust it that much, so I've been trying to keep it in this box here, which is unplugged and off, so it's dark in there. This is our transparency. Uh, if you want to point the camera into here. I don't know if you can see because I kind of diffused the glass like a little bit by sanding it down making it kind of milky colored but there are 160 ultraviolet LEDs down there shining up through this. We want the UV LEDs to shine through the transparency onto the uh, photoresist layer. What's going to happen is the UV light will expose the photoresist layer around the traces but not where the traces are because there's black ink there. So this is what will be facing down of course, without the paper layer on there, we'll peel that thing off. Um, then, what we are going to do, uh, well, first of all, actually, I should mention, if you are using, like, a, a set of UV lamps or something to expose this, it usually takes about eight minutes. Um, now, of course, it's going to differ depending on the UV lamps you have and, and how many watts they are and stuff like that, but uh, in general, it's about eight minutes. This only takes about 45 seconds, so I'm probably not going to speed speed uh, past the, that segment of video. We're probably just going to be waiting here for 45 seconds. Um, and uh, also, if you're going to build this based on the tutorials I'm going to post, be careful with it because it kind of is a cancer machine, legitimately. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Um, Yes, this is a 1 8 inch stereo jack, you know, like the good plug into your iPod. That's what I use to power this thing. If you'll see, the LEDs are now on. I am going to set it for, actually, I'll probably set it for 50 seconds. I'm not going to hit start yet. I'm going to uh, line this up. And I am going to peel this layer. Alright, uh, that was kind of strange. My battery just died out, but um, I hope I'm picking it up from the right spot. As I was saying before, uh, we're going to uh, lay this transparency down, uh, look at some defining features so you know you're setting it down the right side up 
and uh, your the orientation really doesn't matter, but as long as it's right side up versus upside down. Um, your printed circuit board's most likely going to be different from mine, so just look at some defining features. Then you're going to want to peel this layer off here, and pretty much as soon as you do that, you're going to want to put it face down on the uh, timer and close the lid, or on the exposure box unit and close the lid, because you don't want it to expose from the uh, light in the room. Alright, I'm just going to make sure it's lined up properly. I know I should do this quicker with the lights out or something, but I don't want to make any mistakes. Alright, um, down to the timer. Um, the battery on my camera turned out. I ended up charging it for about four hours before I taped the last segment. Or uh, four hours later is when I'm taping this, so this was off. I'm going to set it to 50 seconds again. And once I hit this button here, it will begin counting down, the UV LEDs will turn on, and it'll begin to expose the board. Uh, I'm just going to show you what we are going to do after that, because it's going to be kind of fast-paced. As soon as it's done exposing, I'm going to put the board in this solution, and, uh, and uh, kind of might or might not rub the board with paper towels. I'm just going to try and get it to develop fairly quickly. Uh, I want to keep it in there long enough so the area around the traces that has been exposed develops, but not so long that the uh, area where the traces are supposed to be develops, because you don't want that to be eaten away. Otherwise, when you go to etch the board over here in ferric chloride, uh, if some of the trace in the photoresist layer has been eaten away, it's going to eat away the copper where the traces are, and then your board won't work. So you want to keep it in for about the right amount of time. I used this solution once or twice already, so it's going to take a little bit more time than it normally would to develop, but that's alright. As soon as uh, we develop the solution, we're going to put it into this bucket of water so that, uh, so that we uh, get the rest of that developing solution stuff off the board right away so the board doesn't continue to develop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Uh, you can probably tell if you look through the crack of this the ultraviolet light, I better be careful because I'm probably going to end up getting skin cancer from that. But, whatever. At least the lid works good. So, I probably explained this in the last video segment, but I'll, I'll explain it again now just in case. What's happening is we have the transparency between the uh, copper clad with photoresist and the UV LEDs. And the uh, ultraviolet light from the LEDs is exposing the photoresist layer on the board where there is no trace, but it is not exposing the board where there is a trace because we have the transparencies. Uh, the, the black ink on the transparencies blocks out the UV light. That's also the reason why we doubled up the transparencies uh, in one of the previous tutorials. That was to keep, um, to keep as much UV light from getting to the... That was to keep as much UV light uh, from getting through the trace as possible. So now the UV lights in here are off. I'm going to quickly pick the board up out of here and put it in the development solution. Now, if you want to aim the camera at development solution. Alright, uh, again, I wouldn't just put your hands in here. It's really a bad idea. I'm doing it just because I really don't care. But I, I don't recommend it. You can start to see the... Uh, I'm actually going to develop it face down because I don't want the light in the room to develop the board. I probably should have made fresh develop solution, uh, developer solution. I don't want to overdevelop this. That'd be bad if I did that again. I hope the light in this room really isn't developing this. Come on. It's kind of like an art to this, almost. Alright.
Alright, Nay, if you want to point the camera at that. As you can see, it's uh, kind of fuzzy in some spots, but we have a positive photoresist oh layer goodness. on the copper clad. And uh, the next thing to do is to etch that in ferric chloride. The ferric chloride will eat away all the copper that is uh, exposed, and it will not eat away the copper that is underneath a layer of photoresist. So I'll actually end up doing that in the next tutorial, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.